space scientists are smiling after taking a glimpse of a sample collected from an asteroid and stumbling upon much more than they expected. Now it's all part of the recent historic landing of the asteroid in the Utah desert. When the experts opened the canister containing the sample last week, they discovered dark grainy material on the inside of the container's lid and base surrounding the mechanism used to collect the extraterrestrial rocks and soil. Now that unexpected debris could reveal key insights about the asteroid before the primary sample is analyzed. The sample's historic landing marked the culmination of NASA's seven-year Osiris Rex mission, which traveled to Bennu some 200 million miles from Earth, touched down on the asteroid, and then flew back to Earth for the sample drop. That canister was taken straight to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. So for more on this exciting development, we now welcome Professor Oded Aronson, the head of the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the Weizmann Institute of Science. He joins us from Rehovot. Professor, thank you so much for your time. Much excitement here. Asteroids can offer yeah, insights nice into those chaotic early days what they were like when those planets were formed and settled into place. So what could we be learning from these remnants? Tell us more. Yeah, nice to be with I-24 again. So asteroid Bennu is uh, uh, one of these asteroids that formed very early in the solar system. Like many of its uh, brothers, it formed uh, in the first few hundred million years of solar system history. Um, and most of these asteroids live in what we call the asteroid belt. So they're, they're further away from Earth. They're in a belt between Earth and Mars. But but this asteroid is actually in an Earth orbit or Earth crossing orbit, which means that its orbit intersects the Earth. So it comes much closer to Earth than the other asteroids, which is why one of the reasons why it was chosen as the target for this mission. And the idea is to grab a few pieces of these early, most pristine earliest pieces of solar system history in order that we study them to understand where the material from which we're made. If we study material on Earth, material has been subject to a lot of processes on the surface of the Earth, weathering, uh, erosion, redeposition. So it's very hard to study the past using material that's processed. But this asteroid is really pristine, so it offers us scientists an opportunity to look back in time. Aren't near-Earth asteroids also posing a potential threat to our planet? How does the understanding of the composition and orbits help unlock ways to try and deflect space rocks that could be on a collision course with Earth? Tell us more. Right. Right. So actually, this asteroid in particular, um, I wouldn't call it a threat to Earth, but it has a non-zero chance of impacting the Earth in the future, in the next few hundred years. Um, it's not, I wouldn't, nobody should be alarmed. The chance is really quite small. So it, this is not any cause for alarm. However, there is a non-zero chance because it's in an Earth crossing orbit. Calculations show that this asteroid could hit the Earth. It's about, it's about twice the size of the uh, Eiffel Tower, for example. So an impact by an asteroid like this is, is, uh, is a pretty serious impact on the Earth. Um, now, your question was, how does studying it, how, how, how can that help us mitigate the dangers? And the answer is twofold. First of all, by measuring its orbit, we can make better predictions. And this is actually one of the goals of this mission, is to make better predictions on the exact trajectory of, of the asteroid. So we can be more certain and have um, greater confidence in our predictions for if and when this asteroid might come close to Earth. And the second thing that this mission has already shown is that both from images and actually from the touchdown itself, so the spacecraft came down, scooped, a, it did a touch and go. It scooped a bunch of material from uh, the surface, uh, the, the grainy surface of the asteroid and brought it back to Earth. And based on all the information that we have, we can see that this asteroid really is a very, very soft rub rubble pile. So it doesn't, it does have a few rocks or boulders on it, but it's not made up of one big piece of rock. It's made up of many, many small pieces that are very loosely held together. Right. So if we're in the future going to design something that's going to deflect an asteroid like this, 
then we're going to have to take into account the fact that it doesn't have very much strength. You can't right. push against it very much. Well, it certainly is fascinating. We so appreciate you breaking it all down for us. Professor Oded Aronson, the head of the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences at Weizmann Institute of Science in Rehoboth. Thank you so much for speaking to us here on Zoom. Thanks.